Christy and I go to Shoreline Community College and today I'm going to show you how to work with the GC. First of all, I'm going to test my compound, my sample uh, for acidity, a pH under 7. So first of all, I'm going to take the litmus paper and put a drop of water. And then I'm going to dip my glass stirring rod into my sample. GC can't take a pH under 7 or water, it's important to do this. And as we can see, the litmus paper is showing a pH under 7. So I cannot use the sample. So now I'm going to show you how to load your syringe. Um, this is a 5 micrometer syringe. And first of all, I'm going to rinse it three times with acetone. So you can do this fairly quickly, you just put the plunger all the way up. And then Release it in the waste beaker. You probably see a drop or two come out. It's very small amounts. For a total of three times. And then once that is done, I can take my sample and do the same thing. So for a total of three times. And then after that is done, now I can actually take the real sample. And depending on what it is, depends on how many microliters you're actually going to want to load in here. And then you'll just want to record that value. So here I'm going to tell you about the instrument. So this is the GC. Um, if I lift this up right here, you can see the oven. And we have our needle port. And the oven actually contains the column. Alright, so now I'm ready to inject my syringe, um, but first of all you want to make sure you know your operating parameters, and that can vary based on the compound or the column. So here are ours, and so now I can go over and I can inject. So first thing you want to make sure you do is um, you'll, you'll record the temperature, and you want to put your hand there so you can brace um, when you inject the needle. Um, so you can actually stick it in, and then it's not hanging. So I can press. You go all the way, and then holding it there, you can actually press start run. And once you do that, then you can inject plunger on a steady pace. And you inject that far. And then you have to leave it there for about 30 seconds to about a minute. And then when that's done, we can actually remove the syringe. These tend to bend. All right, now I'm going to show you how to use Peak Simple. Um, here we have our peaks. And this is our pentane here. And we'll just kind of ignore it because it's a solvent. So first thing I'm going to do is actually get rid of these red bars. Right click and then I can delete this one as well. Alright, so now I can title uh, the Coro Peak and the Bromo Peak. And we know these peaks based off of standard um, Coro and standard Bromo Peaks that we have. So I'm going to right click in that circle. I'm going to add a component. And that happens. And then I'm going to right click again in that circle. I'm going to click on Edit Component. And I will tell this peak one. And the actual name, I'll give it Coro. Click OK. And there you have that. And then, same methods for this. I'm going to add a component, go back, and then edit that component. Call this peak two. And I'm going to name it Bromo. And again, we know this based off of standards. Alright, so pentane, we really don't care about this peak because it's a solvent. And we really care about our products down here of Coro and Bromo.
All right, so this is our retention time, just specifically looking at the coral peak right now. And basically, it's as much time as it lasts through the column. And since we set a standard, we're able to compare. And if that standard says same retention time, we can actually know that this is our coral peak. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to edit and integrate. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. And as you can see, the Bromo peak will be clipped and the pentane. Um, but we really want the red bar within the peak. So now that I've done that, I can edit the red bar by left clicking on each side and fitting it within the peak. Alright, so now once that is done, we can go to reintegrate, then we can view results, and here we have our percent area, our height and area. If you want to change anything with this, you have to go to format and add additional components here, but we have everything we want, so we'll just go ahead and save it. I'm going to go to view and then click on results and right here we have the area, the height, and the percent area. Alright, so as we can see right here, our retention time actually matches the standards.